Hey, we're going to get this meeting started. It's our October 11th, 2023 workshop. But first and foremost, I'd like to light a candle. <laughs> if I could. Just one. Just one. There'd be more candles than cake if you put them all in there. Oh. Happy birthday. <laughs> Stop <laughs> <laughs> I, I know everyone, as crazy as it sounds, Rob and I did graduate high school together. But when I was in eighth grade, he was driving us to school. <laughs> 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 the first time I heard that joke, I fell off in the dinosaur. <laughs> All right. Uh, first up, we're going to do the uh, oath of office for several of our police officers. Uh, Chief, you want to go on down? You want me down there also? Absolutely. Yes. And Officer Bowling was born in Eastern Delaware. He served many years in the United States Army and had other jobs before coming to us. He graduated from Baltimore County Police Academy in uh, July, early July, and he has since completed his required field training with the seasoned officer. Um, and so now he's working on the patrol squad for us. We're really happy to have Julian with us. Um, he currently lives in uh, Wilmington. Next to him, we have TJ Wilmot, Officer Wilmot. Uh, he's born in Delaware, but raised here in Elton, where he continues to reside with his wife and kids. Graduated from Elton High School also and um, NYPI Career Institute. He did serve briefly in the United States Navy, um, and he just graduated from Baltimore City Police Academy last Friday. Uh, while in the academy, Officer Wilmot was uh, the class commander for the entire length of the academy class, which is not the norm. Um, he earned the Top Shot Award, and he earned the Top Driver Award. Next to him, you will see Officer Charles Lane, and they call him Nick. Um, Officer Lane was born in New Jersey, raised in Delaware, and currently lives in Elton with his wife. He graduated from Dell Tech um, with an associate's degree in general business. I believe he might have even worked for our, uh, our Patriots for a while. Right? <laughs> um, he just graduated from Baltimore City Police Academy on Friday as well. And while in the academy, he was class valedictorian and he achieved the top physical fitness award for his class. So for the two that were in Baltimore um, City class, they received all of the awards except for the um, Baltimore City Chiefs Award, which we can't really expect them to get to an Austin officer, but that's okay. Um, so if you would just join me in welcoming all three of them. <laughs> Very good. I'll get you guys to come over on this side so everyone can see you. And uh, if I can get you uh, a little bit later, you can come on and I just say when we can get each other say something. Right here on face. Hi, Julian Bowling, Timothy Wilmot, Charles Lane, Steve Swearing, Steve Swearing, and the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States, and that I will be faithful, and that I will be faithful, and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland, to the state of Maryland, and support the Constitution and laws, and support the Constitution and laws thereof, thereof, and that I will, and that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of police officer. Execute the office of police officer according to the Constitution, according to the Constitution and laws of the state. The laws of the state. Welcome on board. Thank you. 
what I like. Thank you. Take it easy on my hand. Okay, I'm going. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank so we're also having them sign um, a police officer sanctity, sanctity of life pledge, which says that the undersigned certified police officer, in accordance with their assigned duties, my oath as a police officer and Maryland State Public Safety Article Section 35242, to do hereby recognize that all life is precious and valuable and pledge that I will do my job ethically to protect all persons. Is that new, Carolyn? That is a new requirement based on the police reform. I believe it went into effect in 2021. Because all our police officers uh, have all signed. value the sanctity of life. Absolutely. All right, team, get up here and smile. Smile big. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, we got to move over there. He's in there. Oh, man. Block it so much. There we go. Eins, zwei, drei. Thank you. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> Before they be fun, mm -hmm. I'd like to congratulate all three of the gentlemen who just became officers, but special thanks to TJ. He's at Alton High School when I was there, and as he was admitted, he is a um, resident here in the town of Alton. Actually, I watched him grow, and he served with his uncles and, and, their, and their other relatives. As well, I know most of you probably are, but again, congratulations, TJ. Listen, just don't take after this uncle over here. <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Mayor? We're doing well. We uh, we worked together uh, for a period of time. Play softball together. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah, we were welders together back in our welding days. Thank you guys so much. Okay, uh, up next on the agenda, discussion with Mr. Ray Jackson, Stonewall Capital. Uh, Mr. Jackson, you're going to give us a, uh, uh, a rundown of uh, where we're at with South Hills. Yes, sir. Up there, hopefully, and yes, I think. Oh, it's so I'm doing share screen. You're enabling that. I did from the shield. Try again, sir. Doing the share screen screen so we yeah. get this figured out. You could always sing happy birthday to Commissioner uh, Robert. One more time. <laughs> I, so I did it from the shield. From the shield. So let's check. <laughs> Thank you. 
I got a shield on chat. I can't do it. I just remembered to do it. You know, that's nice. It's so, it's actually very popular. I don't want to do anything else. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So thank you all very much for allowing us to come in uh, this afternoon. Just off page if, if I mentioned previously, we would try to do more uh, more frequently as we're getting ready to start breaking ground on what I call the second, what we call the second phase. So uh, very quickly, you you probably aware the first building was built in the first phase, the logistics center. Um, there will be an update here very shortly. Um, uh, both the mayor and the county executive have been have been working with. Uh, the leasing agent uh, to bring a, a, a company here to, to Elkton um, that I think everybody will be very excited about when they do announce that they're ready to finish line, the one yard line, not ready to announce that yet. Hopefully in the next month when we come back and update you, we'll be able to make that announcement. So that's important. So the belief is there's two tenants. Um, I'm not, I, 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 I would rather have McLean understand it from C.B. Richard Ellis and, and Describe uh, uh, the the tenants and what their intent is, the uses of the building, so on and so forth. But um, right now, they're talking to a number of different tenants. That's the answer to the question. But there is a finish line with one of those tenants, um, so they do have the ability to to proceed on buildings two and three once they get that those permitted. And I think the first step is to get the first building uh, a tenant leased. So. Um, I can say with some, some level of confidence that, that next time we come in here next month, we'll be able to announce uh, the, the user. So, again, it's a very positive thing, and that, that leads to the job creation. So, we, when we first came in here and talked about the, uh, the project, what we said is we would, we would build the logistics first. That would create you know, jobs and create need for additional housing and need for retail and commercial. So we we were we're accomplishing the first phase. The second phase we're hopeful will be breaking ground in the next month or two. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. So um here's here's the status of everything to date. Um and really what we're talking about is the, the residential portion of Southfield, which is the yellow height uh highland uh, areas, Mike Brown and Sideline Sports Sports Complex, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And then the, the retail and the commercial. So uh, we're really talking about everything on the left side of 213 right now. That's what we're talking about. So the on-site approvals for the infrastructure, which is what I've been talking about, uh, that's the boulevard, the water and the sewer and the water tower and the pump stations, all that. We're 90% complete. We have a number of those permits in hand. Um, the town has been, been been very diligent, especially in the last couple of weeks, of helping us to get to the finish line. So I'm appreciative of that. Been a little bit of struggle before that. I think everybody knows about that. We don't need to we don't need to go through all that. So we're we're right at the the one yard line again on the on the final site plan or or approvals for uh, the construction permits. The off site approvals include. Um, but, uh, improvements to different intersections. It, it includes uh, XL and D-cell lanes. It includes potential traffic signals. So those plans are, are done with not just the town, but also with the county and state highway. So they're about 75% uh, approved as well. Okay, that, That's, that's the, the approval of traffic as well as the plans to mitigate the traffic, as I just described. The public works agreement, again, as I mentioned previously, the town's been great. We're right at the finish line with that. Thank you, Willis, and your team for getting that, um, that finalized. The special tax district, which we've talked about numerous times, we're 95% complete on that. Uh, there's some, some final things that need to get buttoned up, but we're right at the finish line there, too. That is our funding mechanism for the majority of the infrastructure. The water tower construction, we'll show you a picture of that in a second. That's 85% complete. So it's fully erected. It's it's going to be sanded and painted here shortly. Um, so 
you can physically see start to see some of the improvements that are made. Well house construction, as you well know, is is, is complete and ready for testing. Uh Fresh Town Wharf, which is parcel A, the the, the ground that that um that borders the, the river. Um, we're still in very preliminary planning there, and we need to initiate a little bit more work on that side. So all of us need to talk about that, but that's where we are. So so that the part we did get a a, a state grant to do the uh, the study back there. There's been some preliminary work done, but we've got to get a little bit better organized. So I'll say that as a group. Okay. So that's the status of everything. Um, these are the financial contributions. I think it's important for everybody to be aware of what we have done as private citizens in this development. So, so, so far we, we paid for the water tower. The water tower is uh, uh, north of three and a half million dollars. Um, the, the water tower was originally planned for around 400,000 gallons. I might be off, but the, the requirement for the Southfields fully built was about 400,000. Gallons. We agreed to increase the capacity of the water tower to help the town's future growth. So that's why we ended up uh, landing on the 600,000 gallon water tower. We deeded, as you well know, the, the property for the well house and the well over to the, the town uh, of Elton. Um, the allocation of the water, I'm not sure anybody's ever really thought about monetizing that. And, and you know if you if you do the math, that's that's got a capacity of a half a million gallons a day that's permitted, um, and the value of water here in the Elkin area is about five cents a gallon. Um, and again, we deeded that well over to you. Um, the white there's a there's going to be a sewer upgrade on Whitehall Road. There's a portion of the Whitehall Road sewer that we're actually going to um, to replace, and the cost of that's about six hundred fifty thousand dollars. The off-site improvements, which I mentioned previously, that's is an example. It's the, the, it's the intersection of Route 40 and, and 213. There's going to be significant improvements that need to be made there. There's going to be some changes in the in the, the lanes, actually. There's going to be striping and paving, and there's there's going to be a, a portion of the property that's paved. Uh, there'll be changes in the signaling, there'll be changes in the in the striping, as I mentioned. Um and I, 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 I can't tell you how many intersections, you know, off the top of your head, Brian. There's 213 and 40. There's Whitehall Road and 40. There's Whitehall Road and 213. And then the entire stretch along the east side, I'm sorry, the west side of 213. So that'll give you an idea of the amount of improvements that, that have to be. Those improvements get phased in as, as residential density comes online and the sports park comes online. Then there's different milestones that you need. You have to you have to mitigate for the traffic. So that's a phased in portion of the of the offsite. Um, we're also going to the plan is for us to deed over the property um, back at the Elk River uh, for the the regional park as we described. So so there's a value to that as we as we talk mm -hmm. about. So so Southfield developed in capital developments contribution. You know, to the town in, in infrastructure and real property is north of $20 million. It's a significant investment that we made. Um, so I, th this gives you an idea of what the costs are just on site, okay? So to, in order to put the, the water towers, I mentioned previously, it's about three and a half million bucks uh, with engineering, three point eight million dollars. Um, the Southfield Boulevard, the boulevard that connects all of the different strategic partners inside of Southfield. So the sideline sports complex, to the retail, to the multifamily residential, to the single family detached, that main boulevard with the water and the sewer that's in there, um, as well as stormwater management, all of the paving, the curb, the gutter, the lighting, the landscaping, that's, and, and, and sewer pump stations, that's $12 million. Just to monetize this, so you so everybody understands the amount of money. The cost to design this, the engineering cost, is north of two million dollars. And as I've mentioned previously, the the time delays due to the permitting and the approvals, because of the world that we're in and the interest rates, have cost us about two and a half million dollars on our bottom line for interest. Um, so the final update I want to give you and where we are and where we're going to be this time next month is I think that we'll have all of our permits in hand. 
Um, I'm hopeful of that. I'm optimistic of that. Um, and I'm appreciative of, of the efforts here in, in the town recently. I want to make sure I say that. Um, we will have a groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, I'm hopeful it will be in November. So the weather hopefully will cooperate. I will. I haven't dropped this one mic yet, but I'm going to ask the rent the tenant Patriots Lens. So we'll do a, a groundbreaking on site on the west side of 213, and then we'll proceed. And I would like to invite, you know, obviously all the the, uh, the political stakeholders that are involved, and and I'm going to reach out to some county officials as well. I'll leave that up to, to you who we want to invite, but I think it, it should be a celebration for the town. Um, and I'm personally going to invite the citizens. So um, I think it's a good, positive thing. I want everybody to understand where we are and where we're going. And, and I think the groundbreaking will be a good time to talk to everybody about that. Um, and then the last thing is just the finalize, finalizing the, the, the dot the I and crossing the T on the developer's agreement, the public works agreement. And, I'm optimistic that that's going to be happening in the next week or two. So I don't see any impediments now um, to getting started here. So, so the uh, thank you. Uh, I know that uh, when I, when I see the water tower going up, and it's actually pretty exciting. You know, it's uh, it's up in the air now. It needs to be painted. It needs to be tested. Uh, make sure none of the wells are leaking. Uh, there's a lot that they have to do with it. But going back to your comment. When uh, we first talked about the water tower, uh, we were going back and forth, back and forth. I think the uh, the capacity that was needed was either four or four and a quarter or four fifty for the Southfields development, and we really wanted it to be six hundred thousand. I think we had some some uh, initial discussions about maybe figuring out uh, how we can make a little bit of the difference in the cost of that. Now you didn't address that. Uh, at all, but I know that uh, I know what I had said, and I know there was a couple emails that went back and forth. So I just wanted to let you know that I haven't forgot that that tank is bigger today for our use, not so much all for Southfield. So thank you, I appreciate you saying. That. Yeah, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, but listen, we're loving the project. I I was hoping that you were going to say, let's go out there today. And cut that ribbon because I I think it's so uh, we're so close we're so close I saw that Lewis had the public works agreement over to your team yeah and uh, I think we're real real close to get moving some dirt and again we're very appreciative I I would just ask to Johnny if he's going to award the contract for the dirt mover and that will tell you when it's we're close we're weeks away so we'll make sure we coordinate with everybody does anybody I I should have asked if anybody has any questions I apologize. Um, well, thank you for coming because we promised that you would uh, keep us advised monthly and we hope that we have kept you uh, your measure. I just want to say thanks to uh, so many everybody for uh, view. Uh, things are moving pretty good, and I, I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to see this project come in the county up. And, uh, some people may not look at the impact that it's going to make on uh, the town as far as income wise, but. I see a different story, but um, I'm not going to talk negative up here right now. I don't like the way it's moving right now, but I would like to move faster. Look at the uh, northeast and middle town, see how everything's growing so fast. And then you got a project like this, it just seems like it can't move fast enough. But anyway, thank you very much. There's one thing I did neglect to say, I, and last time I was in here, I was doom and gloom about the world and the economy and blah, blah, blah. And, and I want to say this. I will say that... Um, we are, we are starting the processing of, of designing and laying out the retail. And, you know, I would say that the excitement that's surrounding this project due primarily to what's going on with the sports complex and, and the, the, the complex moving forward, the demand for the retail has, has risen like this. So the residential guys were always on board. Uh, DR Horton's excited to be here. They've been here and they've said that to you. Grace our, our multifamily residential developers, excited to be here. We were struggling a little on the retail side. You know, the, the, when I first met with, with Mayor Ault, he, he gave me some specific um, wants or the type of retail that, that we would want to see here. And it has been a struggle. 
uh, but we're making great strides with the sports complex, and that is driving a lot of the positive energy. I just I neglected to mention that, and I, I needed to. So, um, well, listen, I I think that uh, uh, we know that it was a work with play. We've got multiple buildings. It's going to create a lot of job opportunities that is happening in the first parcels. We know that we are begging for new residential. Uh, we need new houses. We need new apartments. And uh, we know the play part is going to be huge for us. And, and if all three of those aren't working together uh, simultaneously and like a clock, then what happens is you don't get town of Elton. If we don't have the uh, 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 additional volume of traffic that we need from, I'm going to say a sportsplex, we're not going to get those nice restaurants that the residents pound us on all the time. Hey, Mayor, we're, we'll be happy with the Panera Bread. Well, we're going above Panera Bread. We're going to be, Mayor, we're going to be happy with a Longhorn Steakhouse. I want to be higher than that, right? And, uh, but, you know, we're, we're going to get those. We're going to get them. Uh, my understanding might be three, possibly three hotels out there in that area right now. And that's huge, not only for the town of Elton, but Chesapeake City's economy for their wedding uh, uh, services that they offer down there. Uh, I, I, I think it's, uh, we are moving, but, you know, sometimes I, I always say that we, maybe we don't move fast enough, but as Earl says, but we are moving and, and that's a positive. It is positive. Positive, we're in. We're, we are, so. And and the uh, amount of uh, you know I want to say the uh, improvements that are being made. Uh, one thing that we've always uh, that I've known through my years of uh, working with the state highway, they normally don't work on intersections until they're at F failure. And as bad as people think, two thirteen and Route forty and that and that track of land going all the way to the Chesapeake City Bridge, it's not an F failure yet. These improvements that, that's going to be made, it's going to actually make it better. The timing of the sports venues coming in and out, they're, they're at certain hours, at certain times, and so forth. And I wanted to add one additional thing. You were talking about retail, and I know I'm, I know I'm rambling. But I physically spoke to two possible operators of a bowling alley that want to go into the sportsplex. And then it led into a conversation this morning with an individual that wants to even maybe do like a, I'm going to say like a Dave and Busters, right? Uh, so those things are, are very exciting to hear because guess what, folks? You won't have to travel to Philadelphia or to Baltimore to uh, have those uh, nice amenities here. It's going to be an okay. They're pretty exciting. It is exciting. Any other questions for these guys? Thank you. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have uh, Republic Services Trash. Uh, come on down. Going to give us an update on where we're at with Mr. Dan Hanley. How are you doing? Real good. We're excited about November 1st. We're just hoping to go to about any uh, pickups. Yeah, this should be, um, everything's on point. So we spoke last month. Um, and Dominic, I apologize for interrupting you. Are you going to do a presentation? No, no. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to um, kind of talk through it. So it just tell me what I need to do. Over yeah, there. you're good. So everything, so we have um, informational hangers coming next week. To be delivered to all the residents. Um, they'll be deploying throughout the week. And as we spoke about our last meeting, um, the containers will be arriving on the 23rd. Um, that should take about five days. Um, then during that five day period, we're going to assess um, how many old containers are out there uh, from various different companies. And we're going to come up with a plan on how we're going to get rid of them um, so that the town has them. As far as our internal work that we're, we're doing, everything's ready. We've got the house ready. Um, we're just looking for some final details on which communities are going to get put on the next couple of days. Um, 
Um, Dominic, could I ask you? I didn't sure. mean to interrupt, but you had mentioned that getting rid of the older other trash cans. We probably won't pick up another company's trash cans, will we? No, no. So uh, there's a couple ways that we could go through this. Um, we're toying with the idea of bringing in a third party company just to go around and collect. We're going to see what that looks like. Um, and then we'll just look at what, what other options we have. But the answer is we'll pick up from the public. So that's so why that's we, want to get, we want to make sure that those containers. See, yeah, a lot of citizens might stick other cans out there, and they're not going to get picked up. I, I understand. Things. So we're we'll, yeah. we're going to work through that. Obviously, we're aware that there's a transitional period. Yeah. Um, so I think that's there'll be there'll be two sets of door hangers. The first set will come up on the 16th. That just gives you the information that there will be trans. You know, we're switching the 23rd with the trash cans themselves. Will be specific dates, specific days. We'll go with that that way. So the 23rd, we come back to the can. That's everything that the residents will use today. That's the date, since the days of pick off and the holidays and all that. So that's those are the two, those are the two types of information we're going to have. So the first one is 16th, is general. Here it comes, 23rd, here's your bill. That's going to be everything. And then um, on that piece that's in the cart, they'll be directed if they have further questions. They can, you know, obviously go to this link and find the information. And then we're just going to stay close with Dan and Tracy and work through it. So I have two people with me in the back here. I have George, who is uh, running the, um, the division out of Wilmington. So he basically works for Jack, who was here last time. And then Andre, who's here as well. Um, and Andre's going to be really the supervisor on, on the ground, um, making sure everything goes the way that the contract says it should go. So the, the one question, or, or I guess one comment that uh, I'm not sure you already got covered. Um, we know that we're picking up the waste management cans prior to or as we're doing, and, and we'll be working as a team here on that. The, the containers that are not waste management containers, which an individual purchased, are you going to have conversation with them whether they want them out of there or are you just planning on taking? I don't, I don't think you should plan on taking someone's container that they paid for. Right. So yes. I think there has to be some type of discussion with them if they want you to take it. Uh, is my comment right? Because yeah, if you take them, I promise you they're going to be in here. There's yeah. going to be police reports filed. Yeah, just to be clear, we, we wouldn't we wouldn't take. Um, Unlabeled containers, right? Yes. Well, we're not going to take the containers, right? So we're looking at a, a third, third firm. Yeah. Right. right. <clears throat> and so what we would direct them to is hey, it looks like there's three or four or five different types of uh, brand containers out here. What does it look like to get get them off off the plane for you? Just a suggestion. Maybe you might want to get sticker says uh, remove can. And then if you want that, stick it on the container and put it out there that way. The uh, owner would have their say of saying take it. Um, maybe I, I see what you're saying. Some kind of a yeah. Uh, well, there is going to be not not a flyer, a sticker that if if I get it in my house, I've got a can. I just stick it on that can, then you know the, the paper, and then will be no no questions asked about it. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some details to be worked out with that. The first step is to get the new containers on site and let the team kind of assess exactly what they're going to be dealing with because you, it's not exactly clear how many containers are out throughout the town. So we, we got to get eyes on the, the whole town to do that. So um, the other item was the, the trucks. Um, they're, they're arriving this week. Um, we've got uh, brand new trucks um, ordered, but they won't, you know, they're in the pipeline. That's going to take some months to get. But that's it. And so I think we're three weeks away. So we're looking forward to it. And uh, so, so, so uh, uh, we give you a spill about this. Yeah. We, I think last time I mentioned to you that the homeowners, I'm sorry, we have a lot of level. Yeah. And that you would contact the owners because it's more important for the owners to know about it this as well. Yes, actually, we're having a uh, meeting at two o'clock today. We invite all the landlords to go over some details and present those before you. Okay, I thought that was.
what's on the level by just doing business with other people like that. So we push that out to NASA. You're right. That's so, what the key, right? The strength that we're telling here, right? We need to push this out to that. And the other thing we're going to stress with the homeowners and the renters and everything else, we got two containers. The most important thing is to save costs down the road. Start recycling. If you don't want to recycle, rule of thumb. When it comes from Amazon, cut in the box, don't recycle. You should be fine that way. These, these are the kind of things, these are the kind of information we want to stress to the public. Like recycling is easy. Just that least it comes from Amazon, put it back in that leaf. It'll save you the bulk space and you need the trash and all that kind of stuff. And that's that's the kind of information we're going to push through the rest of the community. So there's going to be an instructional thing about what can be recycled. Is that yeah, that, that will come back. Yes, exactly. That's going to be that, that's part of the um, thing that we're going to get to right here. And what we do is we follow Cooper County. And so, so when in doubt, you know, we, we do the same. That goes with the door hanger. Yeah, the door hanger itself. We'll show them that thing. We'll show them the cycle. It does. Yeah, exactly. It'll be on the door hanger. We'll so get that on the system. What does as about recycling, single stream recycling, let's see what you can put in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just like a pictogram, that kind of thing. Yeah. That's going to be an ongoing process. <clears throat> okay. Six, eight months. Marine transition. Yeah. Yeah. And we're ready, exactly. So we're ready to accept the challenge. So we're, we need a good partnership and we look forward to it. Listen, you know what my goal is? I don't want to see public works picking up any trash. We don't want to see that. Yeah. Okay. And if public exactly. works picks up trash, you know, we all know the consequences. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does anyone have any questions for yes. Dan and Republic? Yes, sir. Have we come to a decision on what we're going to do on Main Street? Main Street, what we talked about on Main Street, like for the first, we'll, we'll, we'll touch people on that at the two o'clock meeting. But at least at least up to the North Street side, we have a lot of room in the back. We have to, we have to park the campus to do it now. For the, for the portion from, I guess, the North Street up towards the courthouse, I think initially we may start with the cans again, put a, put a dumpster in there. We're still trying to work through that to get So, the Dan had a, had a good idea. Um, we're going to implement the contract the way it was written. And then, in the, after this 90 day period, we can really get a feel of what's going to work and what's not going to work. We'll make these changes that need to be changed on the North Street. Whatever efficiencies or advantages, never else get it built. We just want to get out there and deliver it the way we said we would, and then just see where we can make these changes. So the answer is by the end of February, we'll know exactly where everything is. I, I, my comment would be this morning, uh, it was either this morning or yesterday morning, waste management went through and there was bags everywhere and they came over and picked up the bags. Now I understand if we're not going to pick up the bags, it has to be in a container. So I think now's the time that we need to really stress to the landlords today that it has to be in a can. And they're going to say to you, well, Dan, I don't have, I can't put a can on the second story of my building. What are you going to do? So I'm just preparing sure. all the yeah. possible hiccups. And we talked about maybe putting a, a dumpster behind uh, the parking lot at, at the Minahanes building. I mean, there's things that we could do. 100%. But I do agree with you. Let's go with the contract. But I think there's if we allow them to put bags out now, they're going to put bags the whole way. Yeah, we, we definitely got to get the first step is to get everything off the street into the containers. And then if we can get bigger containers, so much the better. Okay. Any other comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have Miss uh, Christina Brown. Is she here? Hi. Come on up, Christina. Introduce yourself. Hey, Brad Carrillo, is he still here? Hey, tell your gang to come in. I have something for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Christina, but they're all even, and I had we had something for Brad. We had something for Brad Carrillo. So, so Brad, I know that uh, uh, I I know that I know that we were uh, going to try to make this happen on the 14th, but uh, we want to let you know that uh, the mayor commissioners, the so Brad and Jessica Carrillo. On uh, behalf of the mayor and commissioners, along with the citizens of the healthy community, in recognition of their hard work and commitment to the highest standards of brewing craft beer, 
We formally extend our sincere congratulations to this extraordinary couple and celebrate Elk River Brewing Company's five-year anniversary, right? As we know, uh, most companies, they used to tell me that if you could make it to the five-year mark, it's tough, but you know you're going to make it. Once you make it to year 10, you've made it, right? So, and further congratulate you for consistently placing in one or more categories of Cecil County's favorites every year since 2018. Furthermore, as mayor and commissioner of the town of Elton, we hereby proclaim October 14th, which is on Saturday, Elk River Brewing Day in Elton, given here our hand. Come on up, Brad. We'll get you right here in front. <laughs> This is for you and, and the team. Once again. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brad. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Maybe we'll see you Saturday. Maybe see you Saturday. Thank you. I can read it again on Saturday, but I thought it'd be great to do it here since you were here. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Sorry, Christina. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Christina Brown. Um, the number of point of contact for the Hi. There we go. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Christina Brown, and I'm the new point of contact for Demo Power. Um, I just wanted to come out, introduce myself, and get out my business card. If you need anything, you can always reach out to me. Listen, it's wonderful that you came in here because we do have something for you today. Oh. <laughs> so we had a resident uh, last week, last month, uh, request a uh, possibility of getting a new street light at a location. And I have a map here for you that you can take back with you. <laughs> and it's on Southland Court. And one of our dilemmas that we have is that there's a, we have Danford Drive in Elton, that comes to a cul-de-sac, but then there is a path that the residents or, or uh, uh, yeah, I guess the residents of Danford Drive and or Tartan Drive have created a, uh, a walkway, an unofficial walkway. But what happens is the residents around Southland Court, they get a little nervous if there's not enough lighting on that cul-de-sac. Uh, because people's cutting through all the time. So what we're asking is maybe you can take a look to see if you can put a light at Southland Court. And I got a, a beautiful map and a location maybe for you to take a look at. Okay. Now, see if it's feasible. Okay, um, Southland Court? It's called Southland Court. Mm -hmm. I don't think we did anything further with this. No, we did not. I just printed that out for that. Yeah, so it's for reference. This is for you, okay. and you can take a look at it. And uh, I'm not sure if they can be. I don't know where the the wiring is. I don't right. know any of that. Okay. Oh, Miss Christine, I'm going to. What's an external demonstration? What, what Maybe I shouldn't be giving this to you. I don't know. No, no, I should. Uh, so basically, uh, so I'm the point of contact uh, for Cecil and Harper County, a portion of Harper County. Um, I have nine towns, Elkwood is one of them. Um, so if you need anything in regards to anything for the electric company, Denmark Power, um, you would reach out to me. I can get you somebody for pretty much anything. And um, so I would I would reach out to them and see what it is that you need and get back with you. So even on uh, the personal things that citizens might need, or yes. they don't know where to hear them, yes. that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so I, I'm also like um, the face for uh, Delmarva Power. So if there, you guys are having an event or something, uh, we can sponsor them, or we can create like partner and do a sponsorship or a contribution. And have the table set up, giveaways, and loving it. Thank you. We'll be happy to take your card. All right. Thank you. I think. I think. Well, I would say maybe the best place is to give Michelle your card. Okay. 
and she'll be the one. And I'll hand this paper to you so you can have reference of where we're looking at. Watch your step here. I think we had Linda Burris for years. I was telling them they should get a card. Oh, okay. I have a, I got oh. a PCI email. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, it's not on the agenda, but I know that the council with uh, AFSCME would like to say a couple words still, so I'm going to give you the floor. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Marr. I'm an attorney at Constant and Collins, and I and my firm serve as Labor Counsel for ASME, uh, Council 3, uh, formerly Council 67, and a number of other uh, unions, both private and public sector in the state of Maryland. Um, and for these purposes, uh, we do specialize and do a lot of work with uh, collective bargaining rights for public sector employees at the state level, at the county level, and at the municipality level. So we, we do a lot of work. I do a lot of work in there um, with regard to the legislation that needs to get done um, and how those rights uh, need to get established in municipal law or county law or state law, as the case may be. Um, so I'm just here to, one, offer myself to answer any questions you might have about the process because it is, uh, it's a specific process. It's not overly complicated, but it does you know, vary depending on what sort of uh, who employs the employees. Um, and also because I understood that there was some uh, confusion or concern about recent legislation passed by the General Assembly this past year, um, that that might uh, in some way interfere with collective bargaining rights. That doesn't lie to us. It's only for state and school employees. Exactly. That, that, that law only does not apply to any municipality. It right. does not apply to any counties. Right. It applies solely to executive branch employees, community colleges, and K-12 schools. Um, it doesn't have any interference with that. I was actually just yesterday down in Annapolis, the Senate Finance Committee had a, uh, I guess, a, not exactly a hearing, but a presentation on collective bargaining rights in the state of Maryland, uh, because that is an issue that they legislate about frequently. Um, and they actually remarked the committee council, who is an expert on these things, and along with me, helped write that recent law that passed, uh, about the different uh, collective bargaining at different levels of government. And one thing that everyone agrees on, it's very clear, the Senate Finance Committee agrees on as well, is that for the home rule uh, governments, so municipalities and charter counties, that is entirely within the power of the municipality uh, to do. They, you know, they have to do it within their own uh, their charter first, and then uh, to extend those rights and make sure that they're there and there's a sound legal basis for it. But all that requires is that charter amendment. And then uh, you, uh, you, you can create a labor code, so to speak, that actually executes those elements of the charter. So it's a, it's a pretty straightforward process for municipalities, unlike certain other counties, which have more complicated. What can you tell me? Uh, I, I received a handful of emails, of course. Yeah, and, yeah I did. I saw uh, maybe 20. And uh, the, the question, uh, and as I, there was two distinct emails 
but the one talked about the city of Salisbury. Mm -hmm. So Salisbury, did, did they change their charter or did they go out to vote with their residents? So Salisbury did change their charter by, um, I believe they had a council, they had a city council, but by a city council vote, they did not have a referendum, which is not required yeah. um, for, for any municipality. We obviously have the two paths. So the, uh, the a vote by this county commission under the local government law in Maryland would be sufficient to follow those paths. Yeah, and I, I just like to comment, I think that there might be a little bit of uh, uh, thinking that this group is not, we're not against it. We truly are not. We're being a little bit torn with whether we want to uh, do the charter change ourselves or allow the, the I mean, there was a process uh, as the police officers went through where they had to go out and solicit X amount of signatures, and then they brought it back to the town board, which then gave them uh, permission to do a charter amendment, and then it was voted on by the residents of the town of Upton. So the, the no one here is absolutely against it, but our dilemma is whether uh, we want to do the charter change ourselves or have the residents of the town of Upton make that decision for us in such a, a large decision. And um, I think that's where we're kind of at. And some of the advice that we're getting is, hey, let's just put it on uh, the the referendum. Now we had multiple opportunities to uh, uh, for the public to come in and talk. We did the advertisement we had, and, and which we knew that was gonna be full of a room of people pro. Uh, the ones that were uh, against, I think that every one of us has been contacted that they're not 100% in favor of this. And it's because they don't understand it. You know, they don't understand it. And uh, so that would have to take more work on <clears throat> the employee side to, to help sell the message to the residents. But I think that that's kind of where we're at. Am I missing something or is that about where we're at? We're, we're at the- Well, we're, well I think we're all agreeing that we don't think that we're willing to say, let's not make them go out there and get all their signatures. We're more than willing to put this on the ballot in May. The only question and suggestion has been, can we not do a special election and not have to wait until May? That's very costly. Uh, it is very costly. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Michelle? Your uh, municipal election usually costs about five to six thousand dollars to run. And there's no other easier way of doing it, I guess. Well, um, you do want to advertise to me, um, as if it were an election, and I'm not giving you any advice. If I certainly can't do that, but I would suggest to you that if, in fact, it does go to say the May 14th, any changes in um, uh, the budget they wouldn't be going into effect until June 1st anyway. So with all due respect to everybody involved, I don't know that it's an emergency situation, so much so if the board decides to go to a referendum, you've already got an election scheduled for May 14th. Right, it's all gonna fall in place. Correct, and if the voters of the town decide that this is what, the way they wanna go, again, if it's gonna change your budget, you're already in the process of creating your budget that won't start until January 1st of that year anyway. July 1st, I beg your pardon. If I may, just make two points. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always hesitate to speak on behalf of employees. I believe very much in employee self determination. They wanted to be here. They're a bunch of great understand, of course. Understand that. Um, or, sorry, they, the, they wanted to come and speak, unfortunately, because we weren't able to, uh, uh, you had other priorities yeah. uh, at this meeting. Their lunch break had ended, so they were required to. I know. Why don't they? Why don't they ask to come in November? Something they have to schedule from rather than show up here twelve o'clock and then just have to walk out. I mean, there's the chase. They, they would still have uh, the lunch hour, the lunch half hour. Unless they only have to work all night. Yes, they work. Uh, they have to work, so and that's their time. The agenda for the I'm sorry. Well, this the, the agenda for today was Sorry. already. I know that. I'm just saying that you know, it's not a meeting because that's walking out and there's nothing being accomplished for them. You know, I just 
I think they would be very grateful to be, you know, if, if yeah. you're able to manage it with your agenda. Obviously, I can't tell you that. Sure. What, what, is, what is their purpose for coming to the meeting when we've already told them that we support them? What we have is elections, and some of us, if not all of us, want to go. Look. Well, Sorry, I don't. I don't yeah, well, I think we understand. I think, and I would, you know, obviously they wanted to come and say this themselves, uh, but their their position is they have a desire to, they have organized themselves. They believe they have collective bargaining rights and should have it, and they would yeah. like uh, the the commissioners to uh, vote to amend the charter of the town to permit them to pursue that path and begin that path. Rather than waste the election. And one thing I will say is that, you know, obviously I don't have to tell you this, but uh, the the commissioners acting to change the uh, the town charter, that does not deprive the voters of their choice, either in the election or if there is significant opposition, they can pursue a referendum to overturn uh, the, the commissioners' attempt to change. Why is this going to be? You know, well, it, we, we've talked with them and we've been accommodating in meetings, but the more I listen to you and in their absence, it seems like they're a little war going on. And personally, myself, I'm going to continue to support them, but what you have to say, and, and I certainly hear, and what they have to say, we don't hear, but then you're talking on one hand and they're supposed to be talking with you on the other hand. In the meantime, we're not hearing them at all. So you see where I'm going? I mean, we're sitting up here, and I'm not going to say them, but I feel like a puppet sometimes sitting here where we're trying to make accommodations that's good for the town and good for them. So, you know, you leave here, and I don't know what your next step is, and I don't know what their next step is, but it's been said today that they can be put on the budget, they can be put on their first. And I would also think even if they were here, would they still be entitled to the air by lunch? I don't know. Even if they weren't yeah. uh, or would they? I, my understanding is that they only have a half hour for lunch and this but is that but I'm saying is that lunch a precise time or are they still doing their hours of work and during the day? They get that one half hour. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a precise thing because it's under our pay for system. That's the uh, allocation of their free time, that that half hour. Otherwise, they're on company time. So that's how that's how we're set up to operate in this well, government. Huh? Well, well, listen. Uh, I, I guess the employees are being hung out there a little bit. They want to know which direction we're going to go. And I would say that uh, I know it wouldn't be unanimous. But I, I listen. I could call for a vote right now, and I promise you. That it's gonna, it won't. We won't even get a motion to support uh, uh, making the charter change. You know, I I need to. My position is is I try to know where our whole board is sitting as a team, and I don't want to put them under a position where it's uh, called specifically out. But I would also say this: everyone on this board supports. Uh, putting it on the referendum, 100%. 100%, I think we will all agree to that, right? Yeah. Putting it on referendum. I think everyone is, and, and that's the vote that I know that I can pass. I, I just don't know why, yeah, we're being subjected to this. So, um, maybe they need to be voted. Do we so, need to vote? I don't know. You have we counsel. Have uh, to advise the board and okay. councils online, I wouldn't uh, remark upon the charter amendment until you speak with council. So, are we meeting in a closed meeting about this? Absolutely. Okay. Because very it's good. A confidential thing. Okay. All right. Uh, very good. So, we are going to have a, a meeting today with council here very shortly. But I can tell you, as of right now, I think the position is is to uh, do it as a charter. Amendment. Now, my job is telling you understand the political things. You know, I, I understand. understand. Um, you know, when employees request recognition from their uh, their bosses, their managers, their employers, 
it is always within uh, the manager's and employer's power to voluntarily recognize them. That is effectively what the employee for this council yes. staff is. So, and um, we appreciate uh, you, man. We really do. And if you have any questions about the legal processes or anything like this, uh, please, uh, I actually do have a, a business card to give out lost one, but feel free to reach out to me. I will see how that makes it. That's good. So, thank you. You could actually give the card to John Down. So he would look Appreciate you, Bill. Really, honored to Thank you, guys. Okay, this was our workshop. Uh, I think we're going to close our workshop. And uh, I'll send. I'll send this one. Does anyone? Uh, I think. I think they're on here for our closing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, very good. So uh, do I have a motion to do a closed meeting uh, pursuant to state government statutory authority in one session? We do. And a second? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, we re reconvene. We will not reconvene from the closed meeting unless you need to. Uh, there's just a couple of things I wanted to touch base on real quick. But... Oh. Well, let's uh, listen. Let's do this. Uh, this is, we're going to, I got a motion in a second, yeah. but during your discussion, tell me what you got. Um, real quickly, I wanted to talk about the planning commission meeting we had where they're going to start construction on the second phase of the Commerce Center, and the residents had a concern about uh, a lot of things, dust, lighting, noise, but they're all working it out. Everybody's happy. But it came down to the discussion of my machine and emails going back and forth to Lisa and Chip about the start time for construction. I don't believe I was privy to that. There was, I just got the emails. Um, but there was discussion. Um, according to, to uh, Chip, the universally accepted start time for, for those types of construction is 7 a.m. Um, even though the situation might be a little different this time, it might not be pouring concrete, it might not have stuff at 4 a.m., there was a consensus from the Planning Commission that they would like this handled. Um, it's not in our ordinance, and there's a little, there's nothing written. You have to amend uh, our noise ordinance to some degree to accommodate this. So I think it's something that maybe we can have further discussions with Chip about. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm looking at it now. Uh, his complaint was primarily regarding the 4 a.m. start time. Yeah. So, I mean, if the people weren't involved, but it's also really everybody wants to work together um, to, to get it, you know, fixed. So, right now, there's nothing on the books that gives. Well, one of the direction. things they have to consider the contractors don't work for us. They'll work for Southfields or right. or some or, right. or whatever LLC. Right. So we would have to have that LLC uh, put that a provision on a contract rather than us saying you can't do it because it we can say that, but and that contractor will have subs that show up at four or five in the morning. We don't know anything about this law. It doesn't so, matter whether it's for this particular phase or future phases. Well, okay, but what then time do you want to start? That's what I need to have. Seven, seven o'clock. <laughs> but what we'll have to make sure that Southfields or Animal Pro I think puts that in their contract. Rathburn is everything. Yeah, Tom Rathburn. Um, I don't know if he's doing this. Was before. on Zoom and he was extremely um, cooperative about all, all the issues that they brought up. And he's well aware of this particular one and. I was kind of hoping that we could also, you know, make sure that he's on board with this. But the county do. They they researched it. They don't have it. Yeah. And here's the issue: is the town of Belton construction affecting county residents? Oh, so our ordinance says specifically any noise that affects Belton residents. We would have to tweak this amendment. For either now or future development. So that's the issue I wanted to bring up to the board uh, about how we could best approach this. We have a noise ordinance, but not. Uh, I'm not sure how uh, John will have to get in on this, because I wasn't really sure how we could enforce an ordinance uh, for someone's not in the town. I mean, 
Well, no, we could just have, have we could just put it in the contract. Be, that's what I mean. It could be part of a contract. Yeah, that's where right. I'm but sorry, but she was talking about an ordinance. Then I, no, nothing mm -hmm. established. So, Lou, could you put the public works agreement yeah. to start time? We don't have a public works agreement uh, for the buildings. We only have it for Commerce Drive. <clears throat> so I don't know if it'll be related to Commerce Drive or the construction of the building. Once that eight hundred thousand or million. That's yeah. on private property. That's not yeah, under our contract. But this, like I said, this is a wrap for him being very um, open minded about this and um, out of respect. Yes, I think we should talk to him. So if we enforce our own code that starts at 7 a.m., we have to create this. Oh, well, we don't have a code. No, like, yeah. I think we do have a noise. We didn't have a noise Mayor, I, I'm on the call. I, I wasn't sure if this was going to come up. So this is Lisa Blackson. Um, so when I was looking at the code right now, we only have it addressing residential noise and essentially within residential areas. I think one way um, that we could address this would be to modify it we don't necessarily need to set in what commercial, you know, noise ordinances would be, but maybe just set in a provision associated with when commercial abuts residential, whether or not there should be similar time constraints that there are, like we have for residential, because um, there's time set in essentially quiet hours um, that are in the current ordinance for residential to residential, um, and it does. Um, incorporate things such as construction, uh, presumably for like when you're building a neighborhood or whatnot. Um, but when you're talking about the primary issue that was brought up at the planning commission was that there is noise from a commercial area that doesn't, isn't necessarily regulated by the noise ordinance that we have that is affecting residential areas. Yeah, I follow you. Yeah, I, I think I think we would all be okay with that. I don't see any any reason why we couldn't tweak it if we have to tweak it, and uh, uh, we just have to see what time's a reasonable time. I know that the trash companies uh, sometimes they they come at four or five a.m. depending on the heat during those times, uh, and, and we get complaints on them. So I would say that new construction we could easily do it at, at a seven o'clock. I mean, that was Chip's recommendation. I think seven would be, I think, I think we can make that tweak. I don't, I and, think. and I think that's consistent with John Connolly was the individual who had mentioned it. And I think his suggestion also is 7 a.m. So I think that would be at least a, a universally agreed upon time that is reasonable. I think, like you indicated previously, the biggest issue in the prior construction was the four o'clock um, start times. And it was, wasn't necessarily the making of the concrete. It was the trucks going back and forth and the um, the chutes bouncing up and down on the uh, ground that was making most of the noise. Yeah, the good news now is there's a, a roadway uh, that's in there that would would take a lot of the traffic. Uh, mm -hmm. Different different method, but yeah, I think I think it's good. This would apply to any construction yeah. anywhere. No, I think I don't see I don't see any reason. You guys, seven o'clock's good. Make it. Make. I, I was thinking it. about the time. I was thinking about how you enforce it. Um, I think that's the challenge. It's going to be because we're not even in at seven a.m. So if uh, if they make well, it's not a misdemeanor. So uh, yeah. it's probably just be an infraction. So I'm not sure I yet grab a truck driver, you know, bring in a feeder built with a load of concrete, what you do with it. I mean, I <laughs> and we're not in until eight o'clock, so the noise will be. Well, you know, <laughs> <it's good. laughs> thank you for letting me know. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. I realize you were on the board here. No yeah. problem. Thank you. Anything else, Jean? Uh, the only other thing I have since we're getting towards the end of the year is, are we going to be doing a, a yearly sound bulletin to go back to the public or not? Um, I'm going to put it past the order and I'm going to tell you we need to do it once a year. 
I'll call Tammy and ask for additional update. All right, thank you. Thank thank you. you. So we had a motion and a second in regards to the closed meeting. All in favor? All right. All right. Motion carries. Okay, we will not reconvene.